Hi everyone, happy Thursday, hope you're doing well. Uh, tonight we're going to be discussing Whitman Walker's 22nd, sorry 22nd, 36th annual walk to end HIV. It's going to be happening on October 22nd uh, on a Saturday morning out in uh, Congress Heights, D.C. So if you have not signed up yet, you can do so at walktoendhiv.org. Uh, you'll be walking for a really good cause. You'll be helping to get uh, more funds in the door to help take care of people who are impacted by HIV as well, as well as help prevent new cases of HIV here in the district and just make sure that people are getting the preventative HIV care that they need and then also getting treatment after it ha if they've already been exposed to HIV. But I'm going to get my co-host in the room. Today I already have a special guest from Walker's team. So excited to be on here. Um, but... If you are in need of HIV or STI testing here in DMV, hey Dave, uh, you can always call Whitman Walker at 202-797-4439 to schedule an HIV or STI testing appointment. But welcome so much to the space, Dave. We're excited to have you here today. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I'll kick, off, kick us off by introducing the space. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Whitman Walker's Community Health Department has expanded its outreach efforts to the social media platform. We cover various topics about HIV, STIs, and sexual health practices, as well as access to care, social determinants of health, and public health interventions. The community health team is here to educate and support you. My name is Jewel, and I use she, her pronouns, and today we're going to be discussing Whitman Walker's 36th annual Walk to End HIV. It's coming up one month from now on Saturday, October 22nd, so you've got one month to fundraise and donate and get people out there to uh, walk in unity together against HIV. Um, but again, today we've got a special guest. Please welcome Dave Mallory to the stage. Uh, he is the Director of Annual Giving and Community Partnerships at Whitman Walker Foundation. Uh, but can you please give us a little uh, introduction of yourself, Dave, and tell us about uh, your work with The Walk over the years? Sure. Happy to. And uh, it's great to see you. Thank you for the invitation to be a part tonight. Um, again, as Jules said, my name is Dave Mallory. I use he, him pronouns. Um, and I have been working on The Walk uh, as a staff member of Whitman Walker. This will be my 18th year. Um, so it's an event that's near and dear to my heart. Um, but even before that, before I joined Whitman Walker, uh, the walk was um, one of my first forays into um, fundraising and volunteerism. And it was my introduction to Whitman Walker. So it's um, a really special, special event. Um, and we're excited to, to be bringing it to the community again on October 22nd. Well, thank you so much for sharing the walk with us and for being a veteran in that space and making sure they know exactly what they're doing on the morning of the walk and uh, they're in good hands if they're with Dave. Yep. What, <laughs> what's this year's fundraising goal for the walk and how are you all doing in terms of reaching that goal? Sure. This year's fundraising goal is $450,000. And I'm really excited to announce that as of today, we're almost at 50% of our goal. Uh, which is incredible. Um, and, you know, thanks, that's thanks to all the folks who have already um, registered, started to fundraise, uh, and also to our corporate and uh, community partners. So we're, we're really um, looking forward to the event. We, um, we think we'll meet our goal and exceed it. Um, I know it's a, an event that the community just um, loves to be a part of and support. Oh, that's really exciting and great to hear. Um, folks who are listening, you still have a lot of time just one month though, but a lot of time to start fundraising and make sure that you help Open Walker reach the goal and help them get that other 50% of the way there. Um, but where do the funds go that are raised for the walk? Sure, all of the funds that are raised by the Walk to End HIV go to Whitman Walker's uh, HIV and AIDS programs and services. Uh, and of course that spans the breadth of our services, you know, but some examples might be um, expanding supportive services for LGBTQ seniors uh, living with HIV, um, helping us continue to provide free HIV and STI testing as part of our sexual health and wellness clinics, uh, expanding our PrEP clinic, uh, and also helping us to operate one of the very few um, HIV testing mobile vans that operates in DC. And those are just a few examples of you know, the many services uh, that the walk, the money raised from the walk uh, supports. So it's super integral uh, to public health in DC, you're saying? Absolutely. <laughs> um, 
Given the current public health pandemics that are going on, uh, will this year's walk be in person or virtual or and what can people expect? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, uh, in 2019, that was the last time we gathered in person as community uh, for the walk due to COVID. Um, so it, it, we're incredibly excited that we're going to be live and in person uh, once again this year. Um, you know, it's a fall outdoor event. So the risk of transmission is low. Uh, you know, vaccine uptake is great. Um, so, um, so we're looking forward to gathering safely uh, as community once again, uh, you know, and, and just recommitting ourselves to the, to the goal of ending HIV in DC. That's great. Can't wait to be out there on the 22nd. Uh, this year's walk is in a new location. Usually it's at Freedom Plaza when it, when it is in person. Uh, where's it going to be this year and what's the best way to get there? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, in addition to being, um, you know, live and in person again, our new location is um, the, the other big news. And we're so excited that we're going to be bringing the walk um, to the campus of St. Elizabeth's East. Uh, we'll have a start and finish at DC Gateway, which is a, just a great outdoor venue. Uh, but we're, what we're most excited about with the new location is the fact that the route will actually take participants by our new facility, which is scheduled to open in fall of 2023. It's our new um, expanded Max Robinson Center, seven stories. Um, it'll have the capacity to provide care for 10,000 additional patients. Um, and I, I just think it's really special for people who are coming to the walk, you know, to see um, so a, a tangible example of what the future of Whitman Walker looks like um, in the future, uh, but also to see um, what their support allows us to do and allows us to give back to community. Um, so we're really we're really excited about that. Uh, be the new location, um, and we'll have a lot of um, fun activities at Gateway before and after the walk. Um, new kind of revamp program. Not so many speeches. But a lot more entertainment, especially sourced from um, the community itself. So we may have some um, singers, some spoken word. Drag queens, of course, are always on the program. Uh, the Gay Men's Chorus of Washington. Um, so it's going to be a great morning. It's going to be great just to be back with community once again. It sounds like a beautiful morning already. Uh, yeah. So many local people there and, and just such a reflective space to be amongst community and amongst uh, people who are there to fight HIV together. Yep. So if I want to participate in the walk, how do I get involved? How do I register and sign up? Sure. That's a great question. It's very simple because registration is free. Um, we wanted to make sure that there are no financial barriers to people participating. So all folks need to do is go to walk to end HIV.org. They can register there. They can start a team. They can join the Whitman Walker team uh, if they'd like. We would love to have you as part of our team. Um, and once they register, you know, we, we, we help them um, fundraise. There's no requirement to fundraise, but we're going to offer all the tools we possibly can to help them, uh, like a personal web page, um, an email center where they can reach out to their friends, their family, their colleagues um, to raise money. Um, so I encourage folks to go to the website and um, sign up today and you can register up until the day of the event as well wonderful uh so please 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 visit walk to .org to make sure that you register and sign up for the walk coming up in one month and other than the walk if if you can't make it out that day or um you know, you're out of town what are some other ways that people can engage with whitman walker and support its vision and and goals sure i mean for folks like that i mean certainly we rely on um community and um, the supporters to fund all of the critical work that we do. Um, and Walk to End HIV is just one day out of the year, but you know we appreciate support in whatever fashion throughout the year. If you can't be with us, certainly you could donate to a friend or a team or to the event itself. Um, we would love that. Uh, or you could just visit our websites and um, you know make a one-time donation, or you could make a um, monthly sustaining donation. We certainly rely on our sustainers to get us through the year. Um, also think about, you know, including Whitman Walker in your estate planning and your will, things of that nature. You can give through work. You know, we're a part of the combined federal campaign 
So if you are, you know, in, in involved in that, you can give through the CFC as well. Um, and then again, you know, if you're a part of a corporation we, we, or a community organization, we also engage um, through like lunch and learns, through trainings. We are always happy to, to hear from um, organizations that would like us to come and provide some education, um, some connection. So those are just a, a couple of easy ways. Although the easiest really, since everyone is, well, a lot of folks are still virtual, they still shop on Amazon regardless. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you could sign up for Amazon Smile because we are one of the charities that receives donations from Amazon Smile where a portion of your purchases uh, go to support our work. Wow, amazing. Thank you for sharing all of those ways that folks can help and yeah. engage and donate to Walker. Um, especially Amazon. I know that people are always shopping at Amazon. All you've got to do is quickly sign up and then every time that you make a purchase, every single purchase will donate to Whitman Walker. So yeah. please, please do sign up. Uh, but thank you so much, Dave. Thank you for sharing this information about the walk with us. Thank you for yeah. helping us more about what to, to expect for the 36th annual walk to end HIV. Are there any final words you want to share with our guests before we wrap up for this evening? No, I just wanted to say, you know, I mean, this is the 36th year of the walk. And it's an important part of Whitman Walker's history and its legacy. You know, the first walk for us was in 1987, and it was only the third, um, what was then called the AIDS walk, um, in the nation after New York and Chicago. So it's got a long, long history. And even though, you know, um, um, the, the epidemic has certainly evolved, I mean, for the better, in terms of providing care and, you know, letting, um, having folks live long, healthy lives. Um, but, but the one thing that remains about the walk that's been consistent for 36 years is just the spirit of community. You know, just being together, as you said, in a space um, where we can just recommit ourselves to, um, to ending the epidemic once and for all uh, in DC. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Dave. I'm looking forward to seeing all of the unity that morning. And again, if you haven't registered yet or you are looking for a way to support the walker you can go on walk to and sign up um thank you thank you dave um please feel free thank to you. around or or you can head out as well up to you i got to give the outro information that just gives people updates on pandemics that we're currently living through so um before we go we just want to give you a few reminders about the COVID 19 uh, pandemic and vaccines. If you've already been vaccinated, thank you so much and congratulations. You've taken a really important step toward preventing yourself, your loved ones, and communities from getting sick with COVID. Multiple variants have soared across the world and it's totally understandable if you want to keep wearing your mask as uh, the vaccine is not 100% effective at preventing new cases of COVID-19, but it's very effective at preventing hospitalization, death, and from uh, very severe sickness with COVID-19. So just keep on staying alert. Um, and uh, follow the latest protocols that are in place. If you have not been vaccinated yet and you're not looking for, and you are looking for an appointment, Whitman Walker Health has COVID-19 vaccine available. Please give us a call at 202-207-2480 to make an appointment. Uh, and if you are a DC resident who just may, we're not close by for you and you want to make your appointment, you can go to vaccinate.dc.gov or call 1-855-363-0333. If you're a Maryland resident who's looking for a vaccine appointment, you can go to covidlink.maryland.gov or call 1-855-634-6829. And if you're a Virginia resident who's looking for a vaccine appointment, you can visit vaccinate.virginia.gov or call 1-877-829-4682. If you have not been vaccinated and you're not looking for an appointment, please continue to follow CDC guidelines for mask wearing, social distancing, quarantining, and the like. It's super important that you consider to get, getting the vaccine and discuss COVID precautionary measures with those who are around you, but also be mindful of masks and keeping your distance, but especially when you do not know if people have been vaccinated or not. So that was our first public health pandemic. On to monkeypox. Uh, so according to the CDC, there are more than 24,000 cases of uh, mpox or monkeypox documented in the U.S., uh, in D.C., you can pre-register for a monkeypox vaccine appointment or mpox vaccine appointment at dchealth.dc.gov slash page slash monkeypox. Virginia is currently working with local care providers and contact tracing to identify who um, is a, a great candidate for receiving a vaccine. And then the Maryland Health Department also just released a pre-registration system. So you can go to the Maryland Health Department website and sign up or pre-register for an appointment in the future. <clears throat> 
in DC as of Friday, August 5th, walk up vaccine locations are available from noon to 8 p.m. on Fridays or while supplies last. Uh, the DC Health Monkeypox or MPOX vaccine locations are located at 3640 Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue Southeast in Ward 8, 7530 Georgia Avenue Northwest in Ward 4, and 1900 I Street Northwest in Ward 2. Walk up vaccinations will be provided on a first come, first serve basis to eligible residents who have not already received a first dose of the monkeypox vaccine. Uh, in DC, you're currently eligible to receive a monkeypox vaccine if you are a DC resident and you're 18 years or older and you identify uh, from any sexual orientation or gender and you've had multiple sex partners in the past two weeks, including those who are currently considered highest risk. So, folks who are who identify as gay, bisexual, or other men who have sex with men, transgender men, and transgender women, or if you are a sex worker of any sexual orientation or gender, or if you're a staff member of any sexual orientation or gender uh, at an establishment where sexual activity uh, occurs, uh, think bathhouses, saunas, and sex clubs. Please remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Whitman Walker, and check the website www.whitman-walker.org for the most up-to-date information on our services. And for more COVID-19 resources and general Walker services, you can give us a call at 202-797-4439. Finally, please follow our family programs at Real Talk DC underscore and at No Filter DC. Thank you all so much. And thank you again, Dave, and good to see you. Thank you. You too.